And action, Dr. Robin McKay here, and welcome to Becoming the Channel podcast Facebook group. This is our official home for Becoming the Channel podcast, and this is your weekly energy forecast. The week is, can you believe it's the last day of Feb in 2023? So this forecast covers yesterday, the 27th through the, the end of the week. And the way that this works is that I am a clear channel. I call in my guides. We draw some cards together to pick up on the themes of the week energetically. And then I will talk about um, how we can use these, these themes and these energies to be able to support our own abilities to channel wealth consciousness and other really high frequency energies. I just had a conversation with somebody before I got on this session today about working together in the Akashic Records. So one of my announcements actually is that level one of the Soul Journeys Akashic Records Method certification program is going this weekend, March 4th and 5th on Zoom. And um, tomorrow is the last day to enroll. So I hope that you do that if you're feeling called to. We'll drop the link in the comments so you can review that information. But basically, let me just say it this way. The Akashic Records for me, with my PhD in psychology and all of my experience in the field, they really did change how I do business, how I do life, how I work with people. They create the, the energetics for me to not burn out and to be able to contribute my best every single day and to be able to channel the highest frequencies, including wealth consciousness. One of the things that I have learned in all these years doing my work on the spiritual development path is that we can't fully actualize as human beings unless and until we're addressing our wealth consciousness. That includes our relationship with money. That includes clearing genetic, generational, societal, and cultural traumas, messages, imprinting around finances and money. And the best way I know to do that is by working in the Akashic Records. For, to do that yourself, one of the first things you need to do is get the activations that are in the Soul Journeys Method Level 1 training. And I'm so excited to be able to work with those of you who are joining me for that. It's interesting, too, who's coming into my Akashic Records trainings. You know, I'm not the only one who teaches the Akashic Records. There are certainly other systems, and there are even other teachers within the system that I work in. But the people who are coming into my my trainings have advanced degrees. They're physicians, they're engineers, they're accountants. They're these people who are very, very well-educated, accomplished, and credentialed. And they're also spiritually intelligent. Now, do they call themselves spiritually intelligent? No. They might say that they're intuitive or that they have a spidey sense, but I know better. I've seen their neo-personality profiles to know for sure, to be able to confidently call them spiritually intelligent. So the Akashic Records is for you too. If you're, if you're resonating with any of those groups of people, this, the C-level leaders in tech, in biotech, the physicians, the engineers, the psychologists, anybody who's got an advanced degree, lots of credentials and lots of accomplishments. If you're feeling called to the Akashic Records, this isn't just your system. I'm probably your teacher. And there's something about learning the system through a particular teacher. The frequencies that I have are going to be very activating for you. So I want to invite you into that. As I said, tomorrow's the last day to enroll. So you can go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash ARC1 2023. And we'll put that link in the comments so you can take a look at that. All right. I think that's my only announcement. Let's go ahead and dive in. And I'm working with a new deck today. It's called, I'm looking over here, Energy Spirit Oracle. And it's by, I think it's by Sandra Ann Taylor. Here's what the backs of them look like. That's pretty, right? So the guides have already pulled these cards and we're gonna go ahead and dive in. The first card that they've pulled is this one, Letting Go of Urgency. Let's be honest. 
it is time to surrender and to create some freedom from time constraints. If you are accomplished, if you are still working in corporate, and even if you're in the entrepreneur space, we often have this weird relationship with time. We feel time is compressed. I never have enough time. In fact, when you reach a certain level of accomplishment, it's not about money at all. Usually it's about other resources like time, feeling compressed, feeling a lack of, which is by the way, another symptom that you need some support with wealth consciousness. So this week is an invitation to let go of the urgency. What I have found in working with high achievers and being a high achiever myself is that I've actually had to do some energetic disconnections from being addicted to adrenaline, being addicted to busyness. And do I mean that like as a literal addiction? Maybe, maybe not. But our bodies do get used to functioning at a high pace at, um, a, and having a sense of urgency. In fact, that's one of the things that a lot of times we get hired for. She has a sense of urgency, like urgency is a good thing. Well, in fact, wealth consciousness does not flow on the frequency of urgency. So it's time to disconnect from the field of urgency, from the field of busyness, and to reconnect with the field of infinite possibilities, with the field of sovereignty, with the field of wealth consciousness. So can you just feel yourself unplugging from urgency? allowing yourself to create more spaciousness and then to tolerate when you start feeling a little bit edgy because you don't have anything to do. This is part of identity development as a, as a leader is to recognize it's not what you're doing at this point. It's who you are being or who you are becoming. And that starts with unplugging from the sense of urgency. Next card is that once you unplug from the sense of urgency, it's time for learning and taking a new path. So now it's time to stop doing things the way you've always done them and to start seeking out new ways of engaging energy, engaging yourself, engaging your, your talents, your abilities, your intellect in new pursuits. So rather than recreating the wheel over and over and over again in disconnecting from the sense of urgency, now you get to decide what is it that I am drawn to learn more about? Am I drawn to learn the Akashic records? Am I drawn to learn horseback riding? Am I drawn to learn some other esoteric modality? What am I drawn to? Am I drawn to going on a retreat? And then do those things instead of, the, of engaging in the same old TikTok, the same old urgency that you have in the past. That's going to shift your field pretty quickly when you decide that you're going to find your teacher. I remember when I was first getting started on my own spiritual journey. This was years ago. I had had my quarter life crisis. And I knew that I was intuitive. I knew I needed to learn from somebody. I didn't know who that somebody was until one day I was at a bookstore with my dad, who was actually my first spiritual teacher and guide. And he pulled a book off the shelf and he said, oh, and he named this person's name, this teacher. And he said, you need to, you need to read this book. I read the book. And after I finished the book, I sat back and I looked at her picture on the back cover and I thought, well, she's my teacher. I need to learn from her. And within about three months of that, I found her, she was in my town. I signed up for her weekend workshop and away we went. And I ended up working with her and her team for about seven years early on in my own spiritual journey. So there's that old saying that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And a lot of times what we'll do, especially if you're running on a lot of intellect, is you'll find your teacher, you'll know that that's your teacher, and then you refuse the call. It's part of the hero's journey, refusing the call. I'll do it later. I don't want to invest that much, whatever it is. But this is your opportunity to really shift that, shift that energy and shift your life by saying yes to the call. Just answer the call because the call is going to keep coming. The guides are going to keep knocking. Mm -hmm. 
Hopefully you don't have to be hit with a universal two by four before you say yes. Sometimes we do. But in this case, the, the big message is your teacher is here. Your teacher is here. Say yes to the call. Let's see. What's the next one we have? And in meeting the teacher, I love how these cards work because this tells a story, right? In meeting the teacher, you regain access to your eternal spirit. In saying yes to yourself, yes to your calling, you regain access to who you are at your core, to the eternal and divine nature of your spirit, to your sacred intuition, and to your higher self. So your teachers, our teachers are often the bridges to higher frequencies and higher levels of consciousness. You know, there's this, this idea, the rugged individual has been programmed into our culture, especially for American people and people in the Western world more generally. Um, and that, that air of independence, and I have to do it all, all by myself. Well, this is a, this is a misconception of what you're actually meant to do. You are meant to be sovereign, but you're also meant to be in community. It's the old example I give is if you're a surgeon and you have appendicitis, you don't do surgery on yourself to take out your appendix, right? You work with somebody who can do that for you and you receive the benefit of that. So in the field of sacred reciprocity, the giving and receiving of energy. This is the truth about, about sovereignty is that yes, I am sovereign. I am the boss of me. I'm in charge of me. And I also know that I'm a piece of the puzzle. I'm a part of the whole and that other people are going to contribute to my life, to my, to my mission. And I am here to contribute to theirs as well. We know this when we're tapped back into the, sorry, the eternal, the eternal spirit, your, your higher self. And often that happens through the teacher. Now, the next one, speaking of teachers, this one is about ancient prophets and seers. And this is really about making decisions and being able to trust yourself and trust your, your future self to guide you. Trust your future self to guide you. Make the decision that you're going to trust yourself. I think that our trust for ourselves has been stripped from us in so many ways, whether you look at the medical system or the educational system, we're over-relying on other people's knowing, outsourcing our own knowing to other people. And in this ascension process, it becomes even more important to retain your sense of sovereignty, your sense of self, to trust yourself, to trust yourself, to make the best decisions for yourself now and in the future, and to trust your future self, to trust the vision that you actually can see. You're not making it up in your head. You're not crazy. Trust yourself. Last one. What does it all lead to? I love this prosperity card. Talking about wealth consciousness and channeling wealth consciousness. Remember, wealth consciousness is a capacity to attract, receive, and hold wealth on all levels, prosperity on all levels, including financial. So in past generations, even in this, in this lifetime, before 2020 even, we made money working hard, having some grit and tenacity, rolling up our sleeves and getting to work, being down in the weeds. And we really did a lot of trading dollars for hours. And as we've shifted into this ascension path, what I'm seeing more and more of is how important it is for you to make money for who you be, for your frequency, to be able to connect in with opportunities, with clients, with miracles, simply by who you're being. And that really does require some transformational shifts in your energy field in order to be able to receive these higher levels of consciousness. But this is where we're headed. Prosperity on all levels, all levels. Creating heaven on earth. All right. 
that is your energy forecast for the work for the work week for the week we'll just say that my freudian slip was showing there for a second um if you feel like you want to work with me but you don't want to do a group program i want you to reach out to me and book a consultation you can go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash call Book the, book the consultation and we can chat about the ways that we can work together privately. You know, I have my Becoming the Channel program, which is be quickly becoming my most popular offering ever. I'm so excited about it. I'm actually getting ready to do a three hour intensive with somebody who is enrolled in that today. I'm so excited to initiate her into the Becoming the Channel program. And um, there are still a couple of seats at my in my private calendar open this year. So if that's you, I want you to book a call with me and let's have a conversation about how we can work together. All right. Um, that's it for today. Have a wonderful week. I wish you well. And leave a comment. If something landed for you, I'd love to hear from you. And I will see you next week.